Hello, and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. So, last time was Horizon. So, yeah, let's uh, read this and then we'll head off to Alien. So, a temperate world that has hit the sweet spot for carbon based life, Horizon has a nitrogen oxygen atmosphere maintained by abundant indigenous photosynthetic plants and bacteria. While the native plants are not very palatable to humans, the soil conditions are such that a handful of introduced earth species have flourished, and the colonists must take strict care to prevent ecological disasters. Genetically engineered terminator seeds that grow nutritious but sterile crops to minimize outbreaks are the rule rather than the exception. Animals on horizon appear to be exploding in diversity, similar to Earth's Cambrian period. Large flying insect analogs take advantage of the thicker than Earth atmosphere and low gravity to grow enormous. Microbial life has proven relatively benign. A series of vaccinations for the most virulent strains of soil-borne diseases is all that is required for a visit. So, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty perfect. Really? A uh, population of 654,000, so fairly... Fairly sizable, actually. Fairly sizable colony. And a 21 to 68, capital of discovery. Yera system. Venture. A pressure cooker of a planet, Venture's thick nitrogen-based atmosphere is also the source of wealth for a small colonist industry. While Venture's high temperatures are brutal, the primordial soup is not as acidic as on other hothouse planets, and xenon can be readily collected and isolated from the lower, atmos lower troposphere by recovery bots. The xenon is then sold for use in ion drives and some electric lights. Venture's gravity is relatively low for a planet of its size, making the recovery more economical than would otherwise be expected. Probe away. Very rich planet. Prospect. Sensing a bit of a naming theme here. Prospect is a hydrogen-nitrogen gas giant with 13 known moons, most of which seem to have, to have dense, heavy metal plates uh, on first scan, starting a resource rush by the colonists from nearby Horizon. In a tragic turn of events, a galactic uranium surplus drove half the mining firms out of business and the surfaces of some moons are littered with the bodies of executives who committed suicide by airlock. Today's mining corporations have reached a much more palatable equilibrium, and hold more diversified and sustainable portfolios. Prospect is within the frost line of its solar system, where ice giants do not, nor do not normally form. For this reason, it is believed to have been an extrasolar capture. I suspect the reference to... Uh, to executives committing suicide feels to me like a reference to the myth of uh, about business people committing suicide after uh, was it Black Monday? Black Tuesday? Whatever. The stock market crash of 1929. In reality, there were almost there were virtually no uh, suicides as a result of uh, the stock market crash. Or at least not from uh, executives. It is, as I said, a myth. Launching probe. Got a little bit of ease there. Adventure, Prospect, I assume this will be something similar. Watchmen. Okay, that is a not what I expected. Perched on the outer edge of Yera's small solar system, Watchmen is a mid-sized rock and ice planet that has picked up a dozen moon-sized objects. Its nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere is too thin to support life, with solid ice covering its calcium-heavy rock core. Footprints of the first surveying teams to come to the planet can still be seen on its practically airless surface. The planet, devoid of valuable resources, has seen few visitors since. 
Probe away. Okay, yeah, not a lot of... Actually, no, that was a... Well, no, it wasn't that much uh, iridium, I suppose. Alright, so that's the Shadow Sea completed. So. I could go recruit Tally, and it's seriously tempting. Uh, a second. On the other hand, it might be nice to spend some uh, money first. You know what? Hell with it. Let's get our buddy. Let's get our girl. Gotha. A dwarf planet, Gotha has a pressure cooker atmosphere that brings its surface temperature to a scorching level. Carbon dioxide and ethane are plentiful in the planet's hazy atmosphere. There has been some speculation in the mining community about whether all of the precious metals were mined by the Corians before they fled the system some three centuries ago. Rumors abound that anyone who could brave the geth in the system could find loads of naturally occurring diamond on Gotha, but this is likely just a starship legend. Travel advisory, Gotha is in geth space, all civilian traffic is prohibited. Probe launched. Some more element zero. Charum. Once a starship refueling station for the Quarians, Charum has expanded under Geth rule. Thousands of orbital platforms surround the planet and its many moons, refining helium into helium-3. A vast Geth fleet comes and goes between Charum and Hastrum, preventing all but the most stealthy of spy drones from discovering any information about it. Current estimates place the Geth fleet numbers between 5,000 and 10,000 ships, with unknown levels of armor. That's a lot. Travel advisory. Most intelligence estimates state that approaching Tarum is tantamount to suicide. All civilian traffic is prohibited. Population of 250 to 500,000 platforms. Colony occupied of, in 1895 CE. Largest station, Hell's Dives. Dima Station. Hell's Hive, sir. Launching probe. I don't think there's anything in the mop system in terms of... Make sure I know this one. Alright. I'll hit mop just for resources and completion sake. This is a one empty system. Amut. Amut is an enormous hydrogen-helium giant with a mass approximately nine times that of Jupiter and nearly 2,900 times that of Earth. Despite massive pressure, its core has failed to ignite in a fusion reaction, qualifying it as a failed star. It is believed to have captured all other planet-sized bodies in the solar system as moons or, on, or in impact events, leading to its name, Devour. Not intimidated by this phenomena, the Geth have colonized many of Amut's moons and skimmed the hydrogen from Amut's at upper atmosphere. And... In gas space, civilian traffic prohibited. Wasn't letting me leave there for a second. Alright, so that was largely a waste of fuel, but whatever. And now... 
before getting my girl. Taliazora Fast Nemo. So that should tell you something. If you remember, uh, Corians are named for their the ship they served on. Uh, so when we first met her, she was Talizora Naraya. Uh, because she was a child of the Raya. Oh yeah. Formerly listed as Talizora Naraya, the Korean engineer earned her adult name after helping Shepard defeat Saren two years ago. Tally is currently on a classified assignment for the Migrant Fleet Admiralty Board on Haystrom, deep in Geth controlled space. Expert in combat tech, systems hacking, strong engineering background, familiar with Normandy. So, yeah, the fact that she is now going by Naraya, or Vast Nima, sorry, that means that she, yeah, that she is now a uh, an adult in Korean culture, and is serving on the Nima. Yeah. Good for her. I'm sure that I'm sure the Nima benefits greatly from having her as a crew member. And Haystrom, formerly a Quarian colony, Haystrom was established to observe the phenomena on Dolan, the system's parent star. Dolan appeared to be unstable with a high possibility of erupting prematurely into a red giant. Haystrom was lost to the Geth in 1896 CE. Soon after, all communication from the planet and its attendant space station ceased. The Geth have shown no signs of treating Dolan as a threat over the past three centuries, other than establishing several space stations near it. Dolan's magnetic eruptions and solar output overwhelm most communications near it, and it is unclear how the Geth have compensated. Today, spy probe scans indicate extensive orbital construction around Haystrom, housing thousands of Geth platforms and an unknown number of Geth software mines. It is not known how many Geth are on the planet's surface. Spy probes face interference from Dolan, making remote scanning difficult. Resource estimations based on Geth mining, refining, and fabricating practices suggest that the planet has at least 20 more years of use before it is exhausted. Intelligence experts speculate that the Geth have not exploited all of their resources because they wish to keep some in reserve for repairs. Haystrom is a Geth stronghold. Military spy drones using cutting-edge stealth technology are the only vehicles that have returned unharmed from guest space. All civilian traffic is prohibited. Alright. So let's go down. Now, who to bring? Well, I haven't used uh, Grunt yet, so he seems like a good choice. And... Hmm. Yeah, I haven't used... I still haven't actually used Morden on a mission. I wonder if I should bring him with me. Well, he's not going up against Geth. Incinerate, not useless, but honestly, Kasumi is probably a better choice. Or Miranda, Overload. And uh, warp can detonate my
sniper rifle is going to be useful. I'm reluctant to bring Garrus because I've already brought him on multiple missions. On the other hand, I've also brought Rand on multiple missions. Grunt's mastery of his blood rage increases already fantastic regeneration rate, letting him survive wounds that would kill other Krogan. 50% health, 15% weapon damage, 55 points per second health regen. Grunt can go berserk without losing his lethal focus, increasing his weapon damage. I am... Generally, I generally prefer weapon damage myself. No, you need the Claymore. Very rare Krogan shotgun. Deals high damage at short range, less effective at long range. Effective against shield, against armor, shields, and biotic barriers. Upgrades the Scimitar uh, Assault Shotgun, which I don't even have yet. The Claymore is of human design, but is only used by Krogan, as the kickback from a single shot is enough to break a human's arm. Its large slugs are effective against armored targets. Protected by sophisticated fabrication rights management technology, this weapon is nearly impossible to reproduce and is prohibitively expensive. Yeah, sure. Since I'm going up against Geth, Arc Projector is pretty much uh, pretty much a mess uh, needed. All right. That's nasty. Our data indicates that Tally is somewhere in these ruins. There is considerable geth activity and an environmental hazard. Solar output has overwhelmed Haystrom's protective magnetosphere. Exposure to direct sunlight will damage your shields. want him to have his uh, right armor, right, right ammo equipped. If you don't, if My you shields stay. are down. Yep. That's what happens if you stay in the. Uh, I'm having sun. serious issues with my shields. So we'll fight from the shade. 
but no hiding. That is the, well, Fight from the Shade is possibly a reference to ancient Greece, funnily enough. Uh, if you've ever watched the movie 300, or read the graphic novel 300, then you'll know the line, but the line actually, the quote actually comes from uh, real mythology, or real history. Uh, the Battle of Thermopylae, where uh, the Spartans led a Greek force against uh, to hold off uh, Persian forces for a little while. Uh, it was said that the Persian arrows were so thick that they blotted out the sun. So, uh, one of them uh, made the comment... Uh, good. Then we will fight in the shade. Sealed. Authorization Cal Rieger Migrant Flight Marines. Emergency log entries. The gates are here. I've stayed to buy the others time. Anyone who gets this, find Talizor. She and that data are all that matters. Kill us alive. Emergency log entry. The gates are here. I've stayed to buy the others time. Anyone who gets this, find Talizor. She and that data are all that matters. Kill us alive. Hope you died well, buddy. Hope you took out a lot of geth in the process. Incoming dropship. Hostile! Just see him go flying when I shot him. That is pretty great. Ah, up there, I suspect, probably. I didn't, uh... Before the Geth Revolt 300 years ago, the Quarians colonized Hastrum to study the mysterious instability of its sun, which threatened premature eruption into a red giant. As a scientific outpost of minimal military value, Hastrum was ill-equipped to repel Geth forces during the insurrection and fell quickly under their control. Captured Geth planetary survey data indicates that despite sustaining damage during the war, Hastrum's architecture remains as it was 300 years ago, preserving a Quarian architectural style that no longer exists anywhere else in the galaxy. Because Hastrum's sun has overwhelmed the planet's protective magnetosphere, humans foolhardy enough to venture into Geth-controlled Hastrum must exercise extreme caution. Minutes of radiation exposure will overload shields, and hours of exposure will kill. Furthermore, solar output renders surface-to-orbit communication nearly impossible. So on a random side note, uh, the sun destroys shields. It does not damage... Uh, It does not affect grunt. 
Change weapons. Uh, because Grunt uses uh, armor. an alternate path. We're roasting out here. them down. Something up here somewhere. Oh, oh shit! Oh, no. Okay, that wasn't what I thought was up here. Uh, here's what I was looking for. That is valuable. That will be a big help to me.
New gun. Op one, this is squad leader Kelrieger. Come in, over. This is Commander Shepard of the Normandy. Can we provide assistance? Patch your radio into channel 617 Theta. We were on a stealth mission, high risk. We found what we were after. The Geth found us. They've got us pinned down. Can't get to our ship. Can't transmit data through the solar radiation. What's the status of your team? How many of you are left? We were a small squad, dozen Marines plus the science team. Down to half strength now. Made the synthetic bastards pay for it, though. Good for it. Good on ya. What brought you this deep into Geth-controlled space? You're asking the wrong person, Shepard. I just point and shoot. Something about the sun. It's going bad faster than it should. Some kind of energy problem. Cal Rieger here is voiced by Adam Baldwin, who is most famous for uh, for being on the show Firefly. I don't know what character he played on it, but because I've never watched Firefly, but that's what he's best known for. Jane Cobb. Yeah, he played Jane Cobb in uh, Firefly. Yeah. Apparently he was also in uh, Full Metal Jacket. So, that's pretty, pretty big deal. Yeah, he's done plenty of other stuff as well, of course. But like I said, Firefly is where most people are going to know it from. Any idea where the Geth came from? Ships found us. Dropships started raining Geth down on our heads before we could get off world. Systems under Geth control. We knew they made planetary sweeps periodically. We hoped going low emissions would hide us. Do we have to worry about the Geth sending in reinforcements? I don't think so. Their patrol ship hasn't lifted off again. The radiation blocks all off world communication. Right, now. How are you holding up? We can be there in a few minutes. Take it slow and careful. Sunlight fries your shields all to hell. We're bunkered down at base camp across the valley. I left Tally Zora at a secure shelter, then doubled back to hold the choke point. Getting Tally out safely is our top priority. If you can extract her, we'll keep him off you. You got confirmation that the Geth haven't reached Tally yet? Affirmative. Left my best men with her. When you get here, you can talk to her on the comm. Every Marine on this rock is sworn to protect Tally Zora. As long as one of us is still drawing air, she'll be safe. Well, that's good. You're gonna throw your life away for research? Negative. I'm gonna give my life for the migrant fleet all the difference in the world. I'm no tech expert, Shepard. I'm a Marine. They tell me to shoot. I shoot. They said to protect Tally and the data. You get them out safe. I've done my job. Cal Rieger is very likable. Very easy to just really like here. Hold position. We'll hit their back ranks. Wait! Watch your ass! Got a dropship coming in. Ooh. Poor guys. They fought like hell, though. Crap. And then they got blocked. And then they got crushed. Grab the demo charges in the buildings nearby. Use them to clear a path.
Ja, das schön, so. I forgot to mention if uh, if you bring if you bring Kasumi on this mission, then uh, when you get to the uh, her comment on the uh, on the sun is, and I'm fighting in uh, is that she's wearing all black. when I mess with my uh, with my biotics. I mean, I'm pretty sure what she learned was, you know, making things go boom. But hey! wasn't really as uh, scary as they were in the first game, honestly. I suppose it's the arc reactor.
you. It's next to impossible to get accurate solar measurements. The radiation keeps burning out our equipment. This sun shouldn't be like this. It was stable a few hundred years ago. Stars don't die that quickly. Oh. I'll take Tally's word on that. Come on. This is uh, a possibility for, you know, a way to, an approach, a path to come that takes you sort of above the gap, but hardly worth it, really. the other demolition charge and now I'm gonna have to fight my way back Honestly, it's hardly even necessary. Worthless. What? Who has to worry about? On a higher difficulty, it's probably worthwhile to uh, to follow Garrus' advice, take this left path, but yeah, didn't really seem to be much point. Uh, I was tearing through them quickly enough anyway. You can't be entirely reckless even on normal, but send it to the sky. We might want to move. Yeah, you might be tempted to run and hide for cover, run for cover, but you don't really need to. you don't expect to hear together. Why do we care? Anyone choosing to come here should be on their own. As always, uh, there are... Everyone does have different comments. If you have Kasumi... As I was saying, if you have Kasumi, 
Then she says that if he could take an entire building out, she'd have a uh, buyer uh, lined up. She misses me. Tully's order to base camp. Come in. Base camp. I forget if the Tempest is even any good. Give me a second, I gotta check something. Nah, I don't think I like the Tempest. Gonna switch back to uh the Shuriken. Uh Tully's Tempest submachine gun. This submachine gun fires in long, deadly bursts. Very effective against shields and biotic barriers. Inaccurate at long range. Weak against armor. Upgrades the shuriken machine pistol. The commonality of kinetic barriers has led to increased demand for rapid-fire weapons like the Tempest. Produced by Elanis Risk Control Services for a Phipps Mercenary Band, the Tempest an expensive, is an expensive but deadly addition to anyone's personal or arsenal. This one has better... Actually, this one... Is just, yeah. Change weapons. Uh huh. Tully's order to base camp. Come in base camp. All right. So let's chat to Tally now. I'm sorry. Everyone here is dead. Any survivors must have fallen back. We knew this mission was high risk. Damn it. And what are you doing here, Shepard? We're in the middle of Geth space. Actually, I'm here for you. I was in the neighborhood. I thought you might need a hand. Thanks for coming, Shepard. It means a lot to hear your voice. Carl Rieger and what's left of the Marines got me into the observatory. From where you are, it's through the door and across the field. I got the data I needed, and I'm safe for now, but I've got a lot of Geth outside. What is this research you're after? It's about this world's sun. It's aging faster than it should. I can tell you more about it once we've got fewer Geth shooting at us. I suppose, but that doesn't seem like much fun. Would it help if I brought in the Normandy? Doubtful. These buildings are centuries old. If you bring down heavy fire, this whole place could collapse on us. Which would be bad. Is anyone else still with you, or are you alone out there? Rieger had a team of Marines covering me when I ran for the observatory. At least some of them are still alive. I can hear them firing at the Geth outside. Well, that's good to know. It looks like somebody sealed the door against the Geth, and the console's damaged. Can you get it open on your end? Uh, let me see. Yes, I can do it. Here. Should be unlocked now. Be careful, Shepard, and please, do what you can to keep Rieger alive. Damn right I'm gonna keep Rieger alive. He's too cool to let die. Alright. This part is actually pretty tough. They've seen us. There we go. Scratch one. That helps. Damn it, 
still not close enough to actually see his health bar. There we go. Rat one. Oh, one less to worry again. There we go. Careful, grunt. Hostile. Back with me, Garrett Garris. Good, good. Yeah, all those drones Hostiles. are One an more. absolute pain. One more. There's just so many. One less to worry about. There we go. Add to that, there's a couple of primes running around. And, uh, yeah, it's a deceptively tough area. Oh, if you're wondering why I never bother uh, reviving Garrus whenever he dies, which has happened in three different levels now, three different missions. But the reason I never bother is because, uh... Honestly, it just seems pointless. Most of the time, I finish the uh, missions quickly anyway. 
or I finish that get that fight quickly enough that it doesn't really make much of a difference. And uh, while it doesn't make much of a difference, uh, using meta gel, uh, like you you collect. You do get resources for collecting Metagel. Oh, I'm just clumped together up here. That's weird. Yeah, you get... Whoops. You get uh, resources for collecting Metagel. It's not much. But uh, one of those things where... I feel like may as well get those miniature, uh, those minimal amounts of uh, credits and all that, because uh, you don't get those resources if you uh, have if you have already used meta gel. If you're collecting meta gel, you know, to replace to replenish. It's only if you've already got meta gel maxed out. At least I think so. Well, this is fun. This is why I follow you, Shepard. Big things. If you have a uh, heavy weapon, it's actually possible to take this thing out from here. I'll light him up. Watch right. It's not really worth it. Over here. Get to cover. Yeah, no, no duck. Kyle Rieger, Migrant Fleet Marines. We talked on the radio before that dropship arrived. I still got no idea why you're here. This ain't the time to be picky. Tally's inside over there. Geth killed the rest of my squad, and they're trying to get to her. Best I've been able to do is draw their attention. Are you sure she's still alive? The observatory is reinforced. Even the Geth will need time to get through it. <laughs> and it's hard to hack a door when someone's firing rockets at you. The Geth are near platoon strength, but the Colossus is the worst part. It's got a repair protocol. Huddles up and fixes itself. <laughs> That's kind of cute. Get a clear shot while it's down like that. I tried to move in closer, and one of the bastards punched a shot clean through my suit. How bad is your suit damage? Combat seals clamp down to isolate contamination, and I'm swimming in antibiotics. Geth might get me, but I'm not going to die from an infection in the middle of a battle that's just insulting. <laughs> this is why people like really like Cal Rieger. What can you tell me about the battlefield? Right side's got a catwalk with a sniper perch. You could wreak some havoc from there. None of my men made it past the Geth. Middle's got cover, but the damn Colossus has a clear shot at you the whole time, and you've got Geth coming in from both sides. The left gives you some cover from the Colossus, but your ass is hanging out for the Geth. That's how I got shot. Any ideas on how to deal with the Colossus? Standard protocol with armature class units is to sabotage the shields and whittle it down, you know? Kill it with bug bites. But the repair protocol blows that plan to hell. You try to wear it down, it just huddles up and fixes itself. So whatever we do, has to scrap that bastard fast. Probably means getting up close, past that cover. Yep. Yep. This is a fun part. Uh... Oh, so I know if you're playing on uh, hardcore, there's actually a uh, Geth pulse rifle you can pick up around here. I'm playing on normal, so I will not be getting that uh, that gun. All right. We need to get to tally. Got any ideas? Just one. I'm not moving so well, but I can still pull a trigger. I got a rocket launcher that the sun hasn't fried yet. 
You move in close. I'll keep the Colossus busy, maybe even drop its shields. With luck, you'll be able to finish it off. I'm not risking you. You've done enough, Rieger. You don't need to throw your life away. Wasn't asking your permission. My job is to keep Tally safe. We don't have enough people on our side for you to take one for the team. Stand down. I'm not gonna stand there while you run into enemy fire. They killed my whole squad. And if you want to honor your squad, watch my back. I need you here in case they bring reinforcements. <clears throat> All right, Shepard. We'll do it your way. Hit him for me. Keep us alive. You're up. <clears throat> One last... Don't worry Impact about shot. Impact shot. Oh, that wasn't fun. Oh, wait a minute.
and actually there's still a few left. Maybe not anymore. I've got, so I killed all the guys. So yeah, as you can see, not an easy fight. Here we go. But I managed it. It was uh, quieter than I usually, than usually I think, just because I was sort of concentrating. Nice job! I'll get to tally. I'll just be a minute. Yeah, there's... Honestly, none of the paths are really good. That one... I feel like that's probably the best path. But uh, this one's fine, too. I, I think I usually take one of these two paths. And... Was there another heavy weapon... Ammo, yes, right over there. Whew. Yeah, it's, uh, honestly, it's kind of a fun fight, really. Tough, but it is pretty fun. Probably because it's uh, kind of tough. Yeah, it's just, especially like the the Colossus. Also, I really like Grunt's response to the to, uh, fighting the Colossus. Big things! Just let me finish this download. And hey, Garrus survived man, throughout the entire fight. Good on him for properly using cover. Anyway. Thank you, Shepard. If not for you, I would never have made it out of this room. <coughs> this whole mission has been a disaster. I wish I'd joined you back on Freedom's Progress, but I couldn't let anyone take my place on something this risky. And hey, I brought Garrus along to save Tally. It's like old times. Actually, as I recall, Garrus was with me the first time I rescued Tally. And Rex. Yeah, the first time I rescued Tally, I had Garrus and a Krogan. This time, I've got Garrus and another Krogan. I didn't even... <laughs> I was, honestly wasn't even thinking of that when I chose this squad, but... Just like old times, as Garrus would say. As Garrus always says. Because that's like his very favorite uh, expression. Anyway. A lot of Quarians lost their lives here. Was it worth it? I don't know, Shepard. It wasn't my call. The Admiralty Board believed the information here was worth sacrificing all our lives for. I have to believe that they know what's best. Do you, though? Do you really have to believe don't believe that? I didn't ask what some admiral thought. I asked what you thought. A lot of people died here. Some of them were my friends. All of them were good at their jobs. That damn data better be worth it. The price was too high. What can you tell me about your research here? Haystrom's sun is destabilizing. Back when this was a Quarian colony, it was a normal star. It shouldn't change that quickly. Any idea what's destabilizing the sun? If I had to guess, I'd say that it was dark energy affecting the interior of the star. Dark the energy. Is similar to when stars blow off mass to enter a red giant phase. But Haystrom's sun is far too young for this to be natural. 
You may remember back on Freedom's Progress, Vitor, Vitor's uh, own readings on uh, Vitor's readings on the Collectors mentioned dark energy. So there's definitely something going on with that. Whatever the reason, I'm glad I could help. Once you deliver that data, I could use you on the Normandy. I promised to see this mission through. I did. I can leave with you and send the data to the fleet. And if the Admirals have a problem with it, they can go to hell. I just watched the rest of my team die. But he's angry. the whole rest of your team, ma'am. Rieger, you made it. Your old captain's as good as you said. Damn Colossus never stood a chance. If you let Rieger fight, uh, then you actually have a time limit on uh, taking down the Colossus. Um, or else Rieger will die. So yeah, if you let him fight, then you have to be very quick, otherwise Rieger dies. Which is just one reason why I always tell Rieger to stay down. If need be, the Normandy can get you out of here, Rieger. Well, the Geth didn't damage our ship. As long as we get out of here before reinforcements show up, we'll be fine. Actually, I won't be going with you. I'm joining Commander Shepard. I'll pass the data to the Admiralty board and let him know what happened. She's all yours now, Shepard. Keep her safe. I will. I mean, as safe as I can keep her, given what we're up against. But anyway, mission summary. Recruited Talizora for the team. Though loyal to Shepard, Talizora's antagonism towards Cerberus necessitates observation. Also sending recon units to examine Geth activities in case activities on Haystrom provoke action. Yeah, not very good. It's not very good. It's, uh... It loses accuracy way too fast. Luckily, I will be getting a much, much, much better... Uh, submachine gun whenever I am ready. So rifle damage. Useful. Heavy pistol damage. Very useful for me. It says 69,000. Nice. But I'm pretty sure you actually only get 60. It's just a, uh, a weird error that it gives the wrong amount. Anyways... Now for a fun interaction. Cerberus saw footage of you in action, Talizora. We're looking forward to having you on the team. Your engineering expertise will really benefit the mission. I don't know who you are, but Cerberus threatened the security of the migrant fleet. Don't make nice. Yeah. I'm with Tally here, to be frank. Uh, Cerberus is evil and dangerous and cannot be trusted and uh, it is completely and totally fair to be suspicious of every single person uh, who is a member of that organization. That's why you're here, Tally. I need people who aren't Cerberus. People I can trust. I wasn't part of what happened to the migrant fleet, but I understand your distrust. I hope we'll get past that as we work together. I assumed that you were undercover, Shepard. Maybe even planning to blow Cerberus up. If that's the Maybe. case, I'll loan you a grenade. Otherwise, I'm here for you, not for them. Glad to hear it. And, uh, yeah, I'll probably take that grenade. I'll probably use that grenade uh, at some point. Uh, blowing Cerberus up? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, uh... Good odds that that'll still happen. If it helps, check out the Normandy while you're here. We've gotten a few upgrades. I'll get Tally Zora the necessary security clearance to access our systems. Please do. I can't be part of your team if I don't know how the ship works. I love her sarcasm. Remember, Shepard, these people thought enslaving Thorian creepers and Rachni was a good idea. 
I'll be in engineering. Don't forget to introduce yourself to Edie, the ship's new artificial intelligence. Yeah. Thanks, Jacob. Good job. Just, uh... Really... Really helping to make Tally feel at ease. Mentioning the ship's artificial intelligence to a quarry. <sighs> Yay! And hey, 50% heavy dam uh, extra 50% heavy vessel damage against armor. Increasing the tungsten content of slugs and recalibrating the weapon's computer improves penetration of heavily armored targets. Handy. Assault rifle damage, whatever. And assault rifle. Slugs tungsten content is increased and the weapon's computer is recalibrated, improving penetration of heavily armored targets. A phasic envelope surrounds each slug before it is fired at a target. This disrupts any mass effect field protecting the target resulting in better penetration. So it also uh, helps against uh, shields and barriers. Nice. Very handy. Metagel capacity. Handy. Emergency shielding. Shield emitters are optimized to produce a strong, reliable kinetic barrier that can be active for hours. Because of the potential for interference, it is nearly impossible to run two active emitters simultaneously. When one kinetic barrier is down, it's possible to activate a second, but this will generally interfere with the reactivation of the primary barrier. With precise timing, a short-term kinetic barrier can be made that seamlessly retracts when the primary barrier regenerates. Ah, uh, Unity Resource Squad members to full shield strength. So it doesn't actually give me better shields. Whoops. Still nothing, no one new, saying anything new. Alright, Joker. I want to hear what you have Andy, to... we have a green light on that switchover? I need to hear what Joker has to say about Grunt. I already know what he has to say, but... You don't. You look out there and sometimes it's just like, you know, there's all this... You know? Very insightful. Is there a problem with the, uh, no? Oh, that's good too. And still good. So come here too often? I'm just coming to say hi. Keep an eye on the ship. Make sure you're not doing anything that you shouldn't be doing. It's great to see Tali on board, Commander, just like old times. It is her, right? I mean, because with the mask, it's... Ah, never mind. <laughs> What do you it's think about her. the people we're picking up? Well, about the ones you went out with last, Grunt is not a stabilizing element, Commander. It seems Fair. like Garrus has finally worked that stick out of his butt, but now he's trying to beat guys to death with it. I can't believe I like the old Garrus better. It's just my opinion, though. There's really no need to go spreading it around. That's it for now. See you, Commander. All right. Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. 
All right. I had a wonderful chat with your friend Tally. She's not what I expected from her psych report. I like her. Everyone does. Tally's a good friend. We've been through a lot together. Horians are so fascinating to me. But they also make me a little sad. Why do they make you sad? Their environment suits are so beautiful, but with their immune systems, they're trapped inside. I wonder what they look like under those helmets, or what their skin feels like under those suits. <laughs> what their skin feels like. Kelly, you horny. You so horny. Are you attracted to other species? Well, part of my job is predicting the motives and feelings of humans and aliens. Intimacy brings understanding. And passion is nice wherever you find it. Character matters, not race or gender. Anything else, Commander? That's true. So she's bisexual. And, uh, pan uh, well, pansexual, I guess. Is there anything I should know? You have unread messages at your private terminal. Jack would like to see you down in her hidey hole on the engineering deck. Anything else, Commander? Do you have a moment to talk? I always have time for you, Commander. Yeah. I better go. Okay. Maybe we'll talk later. All right. Transfer request approved from Admiralty Board, Migrant Fleet, Commander Shepard. Per Tally Zoravas Nemus request included with her data delivered from Haystrom, the Admiralty Board has approved her transfer to your command. She has been informed that additional duties to the Migrant Fleet may still be necessary on occasion, but has been given extended leeway to determine when her mission with you is considered complete. This choice was hers, but your role as de facto captain during her pilgrimage may have caused her to be more susceptible to your requests. The Admiralty Board trusts that you will treat your new crew member with the respect due an honored member of the fleet. Should any harm come to her due to negligence on your part, this board will take severe and appropriate action. Admiral Rail Zora. <laughs> My complete Admiralty Board. Yep. Tally's dad. Telling me to take care of his daughter. Ah, yes, Tally. So once again, she has a DLC uh, outfit, which looks honestly boring. It looks more like armor, but I don't know. So dark. This one looks better. to say here What's wrong? they lost contact with new Canton. might be the collectors did your family get out of there i don't know there's no communications yet i'm sure they're safe y you'll see yep that's uh unfortunate how can i help you commander do you have everything you need if you happen to find any of those supplies yeah. on the list, I, I gave won't take you. any more of your time. Back to work. Oops, I thought I'd bought the things already. Well, next time I'm on the Citadel. Hey, Shepard. Hey. I usually travel hidden away in cargo bays. It's nice to be able to look out a window for a change. I had imagine so. Mess Sergeant Gardner might just be an evil genius. Emphasis on the evil. People think he's a bad cook on purpose, like he's trying to teach them a lesson. I think his ramen is okay, but it's really hard to ruin ramen. I'm not really sure what to do with yeah. myself. Not much call for thievery aboard a ship. And down to engineering.
Zaid? Thinking about past missions. Got a minute. You might learn something. Yeah, like to never put you in charge of anything. One time we were trying to clear out this gun nest outside a base on Veta. Nothing we did even made a dent in that thing. Someone had the bright idea to kidnap a local girl, strap grenades on her, and make her go seduce the guy in the bunker. Terrible thing, I tell you. Well, she went up there, knocked on the door, and nothing. Grenades never went off. But the guy stopped shooting, and we snuck by. Never found out what happened. Why would she agree? Like, how did they make her... I don't know. I don't know. You smoke, Shepard? Don't. That stuff will kill you. You're a kid once. Weapons dealer. Probably half your age. Bastard smoked too close to a cache of explosives. Tossed a butt, blew himself sky high. <laughs> Not the usual way cigarettes kill. I should let you go. Talk more later, Shepard. You know what? That will wait after I do... Once I have done uh, his loyalty mission, then you'll get the rifle. Jack, you want to talk? I got thoughts like little bugs crawling in and out of my head. I can't stop them. All right. You know I have a history with Cerberus. You know how far back it goes? I'll listen to anything you have to say, Jack. Your pal, the elusive man, never seen him before, but Cerberus raised me. First thing I remember is my cell door in a Cerberus base. They did experiments, drugged me, tortured me. Whatever chance I had to be normal, they stole it by trying to turn me into some super biotic. The doctors, the other kids, every one of them hated me. They let me suffer. Yeah, that is, this is definitely a thing to focus on. There were other children in the base? I didn't know much about them. I was kept separate. They hated me just like everyone else there. When I broke out, I had to fight through them all. I showed them. But there's a loose end I need to deal with. What did they hope to gain by torturing a little girl? It was something about pain breaking down mental barriers and how it might clear the way for a more biotic power. I'm sure there was a payoff due at some point, but I wasn't going to see it. I was wired up in a cell. They tortured you just to see if they could make a strong biotic? That's it? Wasn't in a position to ask, Shepard. All I know is a little girl crying in a cell, begging for the pain to stop. Yeah. Harsh. You loved the power they gave you. They never gave me a choice. Fair. How did you get out of there? There was some kind of emergency, and I made a break for it. The other kids came out of their cells and attacked me. So did the guards. I just killed everything in my way and ran. Guess my biotics had developed faster than they thought. I managed to get a shuttle off the ground. Drifted until a freighter picked me up. The crew used me. Then sold me. That's my uplifting escape story. Yeah, so this is why she is the way she is. You're absolutely certain that Cerberus was running the facility? I was a kid, but I wasn't dumb. I know how to listen. It was Cerberus. Don't care how far down the chain it was. They thought they were so clever. Turns out, mess with someone's head enough and you can turn a scared kid into an all-powerful bitch. Fucking idiots. <laughs> I don't believe this for a second. If it was Cerberus, then the elusive man knew what was going on. I'm going to talk to the elusive man, and he'd better have some answers. He'll just deny everything. That's not what I'm after anyway. I found the coordinates in your files. I want to go to the Telton facility on Pragia, where they tortured and drugged me. I want to go to the center of the place, my cell. I want to deploy a big fucking bomb, and I want to watch from orbit when it goes. Sounds good to me, honestly. Attacking our allies is going to derail our mission. Not a smart move. The file said it was shut down care. after my escape. It's been abandoned for years. They going to care if I blow up a garbage dump? And frankly, even if it wasn't abandoned, I would be inclined to go with her and blow this place up. They deserve it. You've lived with this your whole life. 
Why do this now? Like I said, I found the coordinates in your files. You can't expect me to just sit on information like that. I'll set a course for Pragya. I owe you, Shepard. Don't worry about it. It's what friends do. And here's Tally! Yeah, she doesn't unlock any new, uh, new point parts on the ship. Any new rooms. Shepard, what can I do for you? Is the new Normandy giving you any trouble? Please, Shepard, I'm a quarian. Give me a chunk of scrap metal, a circuit board, and some element zero, and I'll have it making precision jumps. I was worried about working with Cerberus engineers, but they know what they're doing, and they've been very polite. Glad to hear. How's the Normandy running? Say what you will about Cerberus. They know how to build ships. The Normandy's running even better than before. I don't know if it can stand up to a collector attack, though. I'm researching some ideas that might help. Speaking of... Can you do anything to give the Normandy an edge over a collector ship? Definitely. With the right supplies, I can fortify our shields. The collectors cut through the Normandy's barriers immediately last time. My upgrades might give us a better chance. Yep. Multi-core shielding. The rapidly oscillating kinetic obstruct uh, obstructions of cyclonic barrier technology, CBT, are added to the ship. This should help the ship survive blasts like those that destroyed the first Normandy. CBT. <laughs> Shepard, what can I do for you? Can you do anything to give the Normandy an edge? My shield fortification will help, but I don't think there is much more I can do. All right. And yeah, let's check. Talk? We didn't really have time to chat while taking out Geth on Hastrum, did we? I can't believe so many people died. Thank you again for getting Rieger out alive. My pleasure. All for data about stars blowing up. I hope the Admiralty Board gets some use out of it. Have you heard any word about Cal Rieger? Did he survive his injuries? He sent me a message. It looks like he'll make a full recovery. Any time you get a suit puncture, it's a matter of luck. Rieger got out with a relatively minor infection. Tell me about the fleet's Admiralty Board. She's told it's me. one of two major political powers among my people. The Admirals make decisions related to defense or needing immediate action. They also handle major criminal charges, like treason. The other political power is the Conclave, a group of representatives from each ship. They make most of our laws and fleet decisions. Obviously, she told me about all this in the first game, but a refresher for those who may have forgotten. Any news yet on the data you sent? I'm not likely to hear anything for a while, or on an unsecured channel for that matter. Having any trouble settling back in on the Normandy? I like the quiet. I miss the old faces though. Presley, Engineer Adams, all of them. It doesn't seem right having Cerberus in charge of this ship. Are you sure working for them is the right thing to do? Does it look like they're pulling the strings, Tally? I'm not working for them. They're working for me. I so miss you ordered the listening devices and tracking beacons that are all over this ship. Oops. I know you need resources to fight the collectors, but be careful, Shepard. I miss Presley and Adams as well. And, uh... Yeah, okay, good point about the listening devices. Caught some tension back on Freedom's Progress and again when you first came aboard. What happened between Cerberus and the Quarians? They attacked one of our ships, the Idena. It seems they were attempting to kill or control a young human biotic who was on the fleet. I don't really know the details. I do know that Cerberus made an enemy of the Quarian people. So that story is detailed in one of the novels. Uh trying to remember which one. Retribution, maybe? But, uh, yeah, there's one of the novels. Um, 
focused on a specific uh, quarian, or not a quarian, a, uh, a human biotic. Ascension. Uh, as a matter of fact, Ascension. So, yeah. Uh, Jillian Grayson uh, was the name of uh, the biotic. Um, she was uh, autistic. And uh, So, yeah, her and uh, a couple of uh, caretakers, a couple of other humans who were caretakers, uh, including Kaylee Sanders, who was also in the first book, um, sort of looked after Jillian um, when they brought her to the fleet. And, uh, yeah. And uh, on a side note, uh, that book also the uh, the Edena, Edena that uh, she mentions uh, at the end of the book, the ship that ship goes on a uh, a five year mission to search for uh, a new homeworld. Which yeah, five year mission. Probably a Star Trek reference, uh, specifically the original series. Uh, anyway, yeah. So yeah, that book, uh, that that particular novel was pretty good. Um, I believe that novel was also, I think, was also the one that introduced, I think that one introduced, uh, Kai Lang. I could be wrong. He may have been introduced in Bowen, but, uh, pretty sure Kai Lang. Oh, also, I should mention, uh, Jillian's father, Paul Grayson, is a pretty big part of the book. Um, he was a, uh, a Cerberus agent who did end up betraying uh, Cerberus in order to protect his daughter. So... And uh, I think, anyway, you can always read more about it if uh, if you're interested. I think I, did I buy it on the Citadel? Not sure if I bought it on the Citadel or not. I fully expect them to betray us at some point, and we'll be ready. I'm glad to hear that, Shepard. Just let me know how I can help. For now, I should get back to work. Thanks for coming by. No problem. Always glad to see you. Kenneth, what has the new shielding done to your power grid balance? Not much. With built-in capacitor subsystems, they have a surprisingly low draw. Doesn't that mean the shielding boost wouldn't last long under fire? True. They're built for hard, fast strikes, not firefights of attrition. Always nice when they talk engineering. You're the best, Commander. We just got those FBA couplings installed. Now we only have to calibrate every week instead of every day. 
We're thinking about celebrating our newfound free time with some Skillion 5 poker. Want to join us? Come on, Kenneth. The commander doesn't want to play cards with grease monkeys like us. Sure I do. Actually, that sounds interesting. You in, Tally? Sure, that sounds fun. Fantastic. I'll get the cards. This is... Having Tally part of it is why I waited uh, until now to, to do this. My Skillion 5's a bit rusty. It'll be easy on the rookie, right? Of course, Commander. It's all friendly. Yeah, right. And? One 500 credits playing Skillion. But I thought you got more if, uh... I could be wrong, but I could have sworn you got more. If you waited until Tally was, uh, part of it. You might have. You might have got, only got, like, 250, uh, if, uh, without Tally there. Or something like that. I don't remember. Be gentle on the rookie. I can't believe we fell for that. Never underestimate Shepard. It's so worth losing to see you taken down a notch. Beat me up my own game. You're all right, Shepard. Eh, <laughs> eh. Uh, Grunt, probably nothing new. Shepard? Just checking in. Making sure you're... <laughs> I was just... <laughs> just sitting here thinking. The picture. I'm finally starting to get it. There's a tank imprint. The battle at Canrum. A dead Turian. Stripped. You don't see them out of their armor much. A Krogan boot on his head. And a claw hammer. It's under the brow plate, pulling it back, right? Eyes have gone black, and you see tension in the muscle. You can feel it ready to snap. I get it. Very vivid, uh, description. Canrum isn't ringing a bell. Death of Shiagar, female warlord. Turians killed her, so they were hunted down and made examples. Even if they won the war. It was the last push before the rebellions ended. Maybe I had to be there, but I don't get the joke. <laughs> There's no joke. It's just great. It's a Turian, and he's being torn apart for what they did. I felt nothing before, but now I get it. It was a good fight. The enemy was destroyed to punish them all and send a message. I get it. I hate Turians. I thought you'd be glad. Yeah, I'll be. Is this Krogan insight? Realizing you hate someone enough to justify torture? It's not torture. He's dead. But sure, it's wrong. The crime against us was bad, so the message had to be equal or worse. Okay. It's not Okir's hate, and it's not who they are. It's what they did, and how bad the answer had to be. Anyway, I'm still figuring where I fit, but it made me laugh. Nothing else really on my mind, Shepard. Well, you're special, Grunt. But hey, he's, uh, you know, he's connecting with his heritage. That's good. I'm glad for him. And yep, you gotta do this after every mission. So, yeah, I'm glad he's connecting with his heritage. Um, and, uh, yeah, sure. I'm sure it was funny. I'm sure it's hilarious if you're a Grogan. Sadly, I'm not a Grogan, so. Anyway, I wasn't going to... I didn't want to yell at him just for connecting with his heritage like that, so. Anyways. Uh, no. Alright. Next level, then. Next level, I get uh, all warped so that uh, bigger booms. Hmm. 
Then should I work on Singularity or Shockwave? I'll see. See how I feel. Anyway, a couple codex entries. Cy oh, whoops. No, there's this one. Cyclonic Barrier Technology, CBT, attempts to solve the higher end limitations of traditional kinetic barriers. Traditional barriers cannot block high level kinetic energy such as disruptor torpedoes because torpedo mass effect fields add mass. The CBT violently slaps aside rather than halting incoming linear force. By rotationally firing their mass effect field projectors, ships create rapidly oscillating kinetic barriers instead of static ones. Shooting through the CBT is like trying to shoot at a target inside a spinning ball. Significant drawbacks to current CBT configuration prevent its use on anything other than frigates and fighters. Its many high-frequency sensors and emitters require frequent maintenance and replacement. A partially damaged CBT can endanger its operator, who is surrounded by rotating mass effect fields skewing in unpredictable directions. However, if an emitter is damaged, the CBT becomes a traditional shield array making it effective during opening volleys. Good to know. And nothing else here. All right, so uh, haze trip, fun level, fun final battle against the uh, against the Geth at the end, and, uh, Tally's back! I got Tally back. There's a uh, heavy weapon that can make that protect that end fight hilariously easy. Uh, I was considering waiting until I got that weapon before recruiting Tally, but I actually figured that would make it too easy, so I decided, yeah. I'll wait and uh, hold off on getting that uh, that particular heavy weapon. I will be making use of it. Uh, I honestly, there's usually three particular fights that I generally use that uh, that one he heavy weapon for. Uh, the Colossus is one of them. Unsure whether I'll use it on the second one in this playthrough. I probably will. And then the final. I mean, yeah, there's one final battle that I definitely will be using it on. But that's uh, for later. For now, uh. Yeah. That'll do for this episode. So thanks for watching and have a nice, have a nice day. See you next time.